Good morning, sixth grade. Hello. How is everybody? Well, we're going to move on with formula today. I mean, with the volume today, we're going to really kind of develop another way of thinking about the volume formula. The one that you guys are most familiar with are length times width times height. And we're going to play around with that a little bit today and see what happens to the volume of a prism if you double or triple uh, the side lengths, the dimensions, okay? And what happens if you double or triple just one of the side lengths? Um, so anyway, we're gonna kind of work several problems and try to get to a deeper understanding basically of how the volume formula works and why it makes sense. So the first problem is just uh, a cube. Everybody should know now that a cube is a three dimensional shape that has side lengths that are all the same. Okay. So the formula for the volume of a cube is actually this, whatever the side length is, you multiply it times itself three times, S times S times S. Do you guys remember your exponents? I hope so. Um, because the length, the width, and the height are all the same length, so you don't need different variables. So you just have one variable to represent the side length, and then you raise it to the third power because you're gonna be multiplying it times itself three times. So in this cube, the side length is two and a fourth centimeters. So we do the volume where we multiply two and a fourth times two and a fourth times two and a fourth. See, each of those are in centimeters. So that's why our in, uh, ending unit is gonna be in cubic centimeters. Okay, so then I just used my um, converting to fraction greater than one. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Just ask yourself how many fourths are in one, four, how many fourths are in two, eight, add one more fourth, you get nine. So that's where the nine fourths comes from. And then that's to the third power because it's the same number being multiplied times itself three times. And you get 729 over 64, which reduces to this. Now keep in mind, uh, you guys are gonna be using your calculators, I know that's fine, but you cannot put your answer in decimal form. You have to use your calculator to figure out what the mixed number is. There are 11 64s, 11 64s and 729. But after I multiply 11 times 64, I see that there are 25 more 64ths left over to get to 729 64ths. So um, remember your answers need to be in fraction form if it's given in the fraction, okay? So example two, um, so that's volume of a cube. Now we're gonna do the area of a rectangle, I mean the volume of a rectangular prism with a base area of seven twelfths square feet. So they're not giving us the dimensions of the base, they're telling us what the area is of the base. And you have to think about what information is involved in that fact right there that they give us. The height is one third, okay, <clears throat> we're good with that. That's one of the dimensions. But what is entailed if they give us the base area? What does that mean? So I just kind of wrote it out here, the area of the base is this amount, so that must mean that the length times the width is that amount, okay? I'm just reasoning through trying to make sense of this. So if they're giving you the area of the base, they're basically telling you what the answer is to the length times the width already. And all you have to do is take that number and multiply it times the height, which is the third dimension, and you get seven over 36 cubic feet. Those are our little introductory problems. Now we're gonna get into exercise one, which is gonna take us through step by step, trying to get more familiar with this formula and how we can maybe use it in a different way. So the rectangular prism uh, is shown here. We, 
again, they're giving us the area of one of the faces and we'll call that the base, okay? The base can be any one of the faces of a rectangular prism as long as you make the height be something that intersects it at a right angle. And you guys can see here that the height, maybe I need a different color, the height will intersect that face at a right angle. Here's the height, five thirds feet, okay? So they're giving us the area of one of the sides, one of the faces, I need to use the right words, and the height, is the dimension that intersects that uh, face at a right angle. So we can find the volume similar to the way we did up here. If the area is three of this side is three halves square feet, I know that the length times the width is 13 halves, okay? So we don't need to know what those numbers are. We just need to know what their product is. And then we multiply it by the height and we get the volume is 65 over six, which again, um, converting to a mixed number is 10 and five, six cubic feet. Okay, so all we did was take the area of one of the faces, not knowing what the length and width actually are, um, and we multiply that times the height. Now, the next step says determine the volume of the prism if the height of the prism is doubled. Okay, so this is where it's gonna get interesting. So here's our current height, five over three, five thirds. And now we have to pretend that that is doubled. We have to double that and find the new volume. So there you go, I doubled the height, five thirds times two, I got 10 thirds. So there's our new height. And here is my new volume calculation. I take the same area of that base. This these dimensions didn't change. It was only the height that got doubled. And my new volume is, sorry, I got this. Okay. My new volume is 21 and two thirds cubic feet. Okay. So I want you to look at the comparison of these two numbers, if you can. Okay. Um, it's hard to see with the mixed numbers, but 10 and 5, 6 plus 10 and 5, 6, if I'm doubling that, I'm going to get 20 and 10, 6, which is 21. And if, if I, if I re turn that into a mixed number, 6 goes into 10 one whole time. So I add the 1 to the 20, and I have 4, 6 left over, and that reduces to 21 and 2 thirds. So by doubling the height, uh, but keeping the base the same, the area the same, I doubled my volume. And that's just kind of what I noticed here. If one side length is doubled or the height, the volume will double. Interesting, maybe helpful in the future. Compare the volume of the rectangular prism in part A with the volume of the prism in part B. What do you notice? Okay, well that's what I just explained to you guys is that if you double the first volume, you will get this, which is the same thing as the volume of the second after you've doubled the height. So again, the volume doubles when one side length is doubled, okay? And in this case, the one side length that we're doubling is the height. So if you just double the height, you will double the volume. Okay, leave the base alone, leave that one, the length and the width alone, just double the height and it will double the volume. That's kind of amazing. So now we're just gonna take a little closer look, make a little chart to organize our information. What I worry about with you guys watching these videos, and I think many of you are just copying down what I'm doing here and not really taking the time to work it out yourself, I'm worried that you're losing um, the time to learn some of these tricks and tips um, when you study math. So what this problem is, is organizing the information in the data so we can look at it closely and compare it. They want us to complete this table to determine the relationship between the height and the volume. So they're asking us to slow down. You guys take your time with this, look at this. 
If the height of the prism is five thirds, we found the volume of the prism was 65 six. Now they're leaving them in this format to make it easier to look at um, how these numbers compare to each other because they will all be in six. So it'll be easier for us to compare them. So they're leaving them in what we call a fraction greater than one or an improper fraction. So we, we know this, we figured that out in the first part of this problem. Then we doubled the height, okay? Five thirds times two is 10 thirds. And we got this volume, which is, um, which is this number here, okay? 130 over six. So I think it's easier to see that this is doubled. 65 times two is 130. Five times two is 10, okay? So there's something happening here that they want you to pay attention to. Um, now, we, now when we triple it, all right, five times 15, I mean, five times three is 15, is this tripled? Is 65 times three, 195? Get your calculator and check, all right? And the next questions are just asking, uh, asking us to really, forcing us to look at this, okay? And if you guys are just copying stuff down and not really thinking about it, first of all, you're missing the advantage of making a table of data to look at it and organizing your information. And that's what, that's what this problem is all about, asking you to make a table, slow down, look at the numbers, think about the relationships that you're seeing. So what happened to the volume when the height was tripled? So what happened to the volume when the height was tripled? Here's where the height is tripled, right here, when the height was 15 thirds. And hopefully you have seen that the volume was also tripled. Okay, so that's the answer there. What happened to the volume when the height was quadrupled? That's this one, five times four is 20, 65 times four is 260. So the volume quadrupled. Now, what conclusions can you make when the base area stays constant? Okay, this is important, base area stays constant and only the height changes. What conclusions can you make? Think about that for a minute. How would you put that into words? What is the relationship between the height, the change in the height and the change in the volume if everything else stays the same? Well, hopefully you can see that the volume changes by the same factor. So if the height doubles, the volume doubles. If the height is multiplied by three, the volume is multiplied by three. If the height is quadrupled or multiplied by four, the volume is multiplied by four. All right, so now we'll move on to exercise two. Now we're going to get a new um, variable, this capital B. Pay attention to the capital B here. You'll see it again in your life, okay? And you've, you're already becoming very familiar with the, the H, which always stands for height usually. So if capital B represents the area of the base, please pay attention to this. I've taught this for so long and kids just blow right through it and they go, B stands for base. Well, guess what? B, capital B is not standing for base, okay? If you just say the word base, you're being unclear. B stands for the area of the base which is in square units, which means it has two dimensions, okay? Height just represents the height. And as we learned with our right triangles and our area of triangles, height must always be measured at a right angle, at a, at a 90 degree angle. So they want you to write an expression that represents the volume, okay? So this is going back to what we did here. Here is the area of the base, here is the height, and look how we found the volume. We just took this area, which we knew it was the length times the width already multiplied for us. Yes, thank you very much. 
and we had to multiply it by the height. So this is basically the area of the base that they're talking about, which stands for capital B. So this is another formula that's shorter than length times width times height. And hopefully you can see that the area of the base, the area of the base, I need to write it out so it'll sink in your head. And you need to work on learning this fact. The area of the base is the length and the width multiplied together. So the base is already the length times the width. So if you have that number handy, all you have to do is multiply it by the height, okay? Super cool because it applies to other shapes besides rectangular prisms, and that's important uh, for the future. Okay. If we double the height, write an expression for the new height. So now we're going to get back into um, we're going to get back into the relationship between changing the height and what happens to the volume. So here's a little expression that just gives us double the height. Remember that word double means multiply by two. Add h to itself. Okay, and when you add H to itself, you get double or two times H. Okay, you can, most people, I don't know. I shouldn't say most people. Some people think about doubling this way. Other people think about doubling that way, but they're the same, okay? Because H plus H equals two H. So there's our expression for double the height. Now write an expression that represents the volume with the doubled height. So we'll just use our same formula, area of the base times double the height. So volume equals B times 2H. And I just am reminding you here, uh, e, B is area of the base and H is the height of the prism, okay? So now that may look a little messy to you. So that gets us to our next question. They want us to write an equivalent expression for the volume. And basically, let me just say this. They did not tell us to write an equation. So I'm gonna take away the V equals. They just asked us to write an expression. I wanna be careful that you're paying attention to the difference between an expression and an equation, okay? So they just asked us to write an expression that represents the volume. Well, the area of the base times doubled height would be the volume, okay? That's all we need. Now it says write an equivalent expression using the commutative and associative properties to show the volume is twice the original volume. So we just have to reorder this. This is B times two times H. Well, I could just use the commutative property and reorder that and write it as two BH. Now that might make it clear that the volume, look at this BH here, that's the original volume. But if we double our height and we multiply it by two, you can see here that the volume is going to be doubled. Super awesome. This is algebra. Algebra at its finest. Please take the time to make sure you understand why that means what it does. It'll save you so much trouble in the future. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to three. It says, use the cube to answer the following questions. First of all, determine the volume of the cube. All right, here's our beautiful little cube. All sides are the same. I'm using my volume formula for cubes, which means I take the side length and I, I raise it to the third power or in other words, I multiply it times itself. I get 27 cubic meters. Now it says determine the volume of a cube whose side lengths are half as long as side lengths of the original cube. So we're not doubling now, we're halving. There's a difference between doubling and halving people. Pay attention. Determine the volume of the cube. Okay, so I need to multiply my side length, my original side length times one half because I'm having it, okay? The other way to think about that is divide three by two. Either way, you're gonna get three halves meters, okay? So my new volume of my smaller cube is going to be 27 eighths meters because three halves times three halves times three halves 
is three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, two times two is four, four times two is eight. Okay, so there's, there's me showing my work. Um, keep in mind what we just did here, pay attention. We have all three of the dimensions. We're not just having the height anymore. We've moved on to a different scenario. Now they want us to determine, determine the volume, <clears throat> determine the volume if the side lengths are one fourth as long as the original cube's lengths. Okay, well, we're gonna multiply the original side length times one fourth, get three fourths, find the volume. Three times three times three is still 27. Four times four times four is 64. This is my new volume, okay? So I went from 27 cubic meters, which is pretty large, to now I am less than one cubic meter in volume, okay? When I, when I take one quarter of the side length. Now, D, determine the volume if the side lengths are one sixth as long as the, okay, we're gonna do it again. Three times one sixth, hang on, sorry. Three times one sixth, that equals three six or one half meter. Now our cube has only one half meter in length, side length. And so our volume is gonna be one eighth of a cubic meter, one eighth cube meters cubed. All right, There's, this is the case of the shrinking cube. Getting smaller and smaller. Now, explain the relationship between the side lengths and the volumes of the cube. Now this time they didn't make us write a table and I think that they should have because I don't know that it's um, as easy for you guys to see, especially without me helping you, but it says explain the relationship between the side lengths and the volumes of the cube. I wrote down, if the side length of a cube is reduced by one half, or shrank, uh, I don't even know if I want to say that, um, is I'll just say is halved, okay? Just to make is halved. The volume is reduced. Now this is not halved. This is what you, what you need to see, okay? So if the side length of the cube is halved or multiplied by one half, okay, then the volume is gonna be reduced by one eighth, okay? There's an exponential effect to the volume because each side length is multiplied by one half. So the volume is, the original volume is going to be one eighth, uh, excuse me, the new volume will be one eighth of the original volume. Okay, now if you don't believe me, you're going to have to go back to 27 was our original volume. What is 27 times 1 8? It's this number right here, which is the volume of our new cube once we halved the um, side lengths. And then when we took one third of the side lengths, or no, one fourth of the side lengths, that was the next one we end up getting 27 over 64, okay? So um, they want us to check to see if the relationship you found in exercise three is the same for this rectangular prism. So we're gonna do it again now. And this time we're gonna do it with a rectangular prism, not a cube, okay? They want us to first determine the volume, nine times two times three, okay? Or I'm just gonna show you the new formula What's the area of that bottom of the box? Nine times two, which is 18. 18 times three, you'll still get 54, okay? And then determine the volume if all the sides are half as long. So you have to think what's nine divided by two? Um, four and a half. What's two divided by two? One. What's uh, three divided by two? One and a half. So I got lazy, I converted them all to decimals and I got my volume to be six and three fourths uh, cubic feet. All right, now determine the volume if the sides are one third as long. Okay, so 
um, one third of nine is three, one third of two is two thirds, one third of three is one. If you multiply those together, you get six thirds or two cubic feet. Okay, now the question now is the relationship in the side lengths and the volume the same as that occurred in exercise three? All right, so I made a table because I'm harping on tables today. They're very helpful. They're a concise way to look at information. If the change, by the way, that triangle is a symbol that means change. You won't learn that until calculus. That means change, and I just use it. I, I think it's shorter. I could have written the word, but then it gets real wordy, and, and you guys want to tune out. But this triangle means change in side length. Okay, if we have the side lengths, the volume is reduced by one eighth, is multiplied by one eighth. You have eight an eighth of the volume. Now, is that true? Yes, because 6.75 times eight is 54, or 54 divided by eight is 6.75. Okay, so the new volume is one eighth of the old volume. And then if you, um, if you, multiply each side length by one third, the volume needs to be multiplied by 127. So our new volume was two, okay? So if you take 54 divided by 27, you'll get two, or go the other way, two times 27 equals 54. So the relationship is the same. <clears throat> okay, now we are going to sum it all up with some notation. If E represents the side length of the cube, create an expression that shows the volume of the cube. We're talking about a cube, all the side lengths are the same. Boom, you just put the exponent three. Okay, now if we divide the side lengths by three, create an expression for the new side length. So that's dividing by three, or in other words, multiplying by one third. So we're reducing the side lengths by one third. We're taking a third of the side lengths, okay? So that's how you write that. Now, write an expression that represents the volume of the cube with the one third side length, okay? So I always am trying to write formulas and complete sentences, but it says expression, so there's our expression. We just take that side length from here and we multiply it times itself which I did using an exponent. So you could have written it like this if you prefer, okay? These are, the, these are equivalent expressions. Now, write an equivalent expression to show the volume is 1 27th of the original volume. All they're asking us to do is look at this expression here or this expression here. What's another way you could write it? Well, if you multiply e times e times e, the only way to write that is either e cubed or e times e times e. But three cubed, three to the third power, you can write that as 27. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And this clearly shows, clearly, that our original volume, <clears throat> which is e cubed, divided by 27 is our new volume. So if you take a third of the side length, the volume will be divided by not three, but 27, which is three cubed, okay? Because there's an exponential effect because there are three dimensions. So one third times one third times one third is 127. So our new volume, is gonna be 1 27th of the original volume. Okay, I think this is super cool. Hopefully you guys thought so too. Um, good luck with your problem set. Please come see me in office hours. I'm very lonely if you guys don't come to visit. All right, have a great day. Be kind, work hard.